Hey everybody, this is GGB. Today we're going to be talking about the Friday games. Let's get it! Um, at 6 o'clock, we got our first Friday game. Oh, we got Temple traveling to number 5, Cincinnati. And I actually like this time of year, because, like, there's enough teams. Like, there's 33 football teams right now, at least from my count, that are still playoff eligible, right? And I mean, like, that's, that's, that's a lot of teams, right? But it's also, it's enough that you know each of them individually. You know their, some of their strengths. You know some of their weaknesses. You know their, like, around their shot. But it's enough that you have 33 teams and I think all 33 demand an amount of respect. You don't, you don't have to respect, obviously, Wyoming as much as you do Alabama. But you do have to respect Wyoming a good amount because they are undefeated at this point of the year. Um, that's why I love it at this point of the year. Cincinnati is one of those teams that I love watching at this time of year and later in the year. Um, Cincy is a team that is likely going to be in the playoff conversation deep into December, right? It's going to be very much a debate between whether Cincinnati gets in or maybe another Power 5 team that gets in. Um, well, let's talk about Temple a little bit, right? Temple, I mean, this is the team, like Temple, I mean, everyone's going to be talking about Cincinnati in this game. Well, let's talk about Temple a little bit, right? Uh, they, they're three and two, right? They're coming off two straight wins. They start off the season really poorly with a 61-14 win at Rutgers. Um, uh, but then they end up with a 45-24 win at Akron. Then they lose 23 to Boston College, 41, win 41-7 against w Wagner, and then win 34-31 against Memphis. This is a Temple team that, <coughs> outside of the Power Five, they have not lost to a single football team, right? If you take out the Rutgers loss and the Boston College loss, which are both Power 5 football teams. They haven't lost one yet, right? They have the win against Akron, the win against Wagner, and then you have the win against Memphis. Like, I mean, they're, they're not doing horribly. This is a Temple team that I think is much better than I expect them to be this year. Dwayne Mathis, their quarterback, had went 35-44 last week for 322 yards and three touchdowns. Um, Edward Sadie uh, was leading the ball rushing. He had 12 carries for 62 yards. And receiving-wise, Ahmad Anderson Jr. had three catches for 108 yards and a touchdown for Temple. Cincy, on the other hand, they've had a very, sorry, very, 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 very good start to the season. They had a 49-14 win against Miami, Ohio to start the year, 42-7 win against Murray State. Then that third, uh, I think it was fourth week, they might have had a bye. I think they had a bye before the Indiana. No, they had a bye after that. Had the bye after the Indiana game. I'm not positive, but I think they had the bye after the Indiana game. They came into the Indiana game sluggish. Indiana was winning at halftime and looked like a better team at halftime. Looked like they were going to win at halftime. Since they came out much stronger in the second half, so they pull off a 38-24 win at Indiana. Then they have a bye. Then they travel to Notre Dame, number nine Notre Dame. Like this was supposed to be a huge matchup, and they win pretty. <laughs> Like, it got a little bit too close for comfort, in my opinion, in the second half when it was 17-13. Like, you're leading 17-0 at halftime. Notre Dame comes back, and they, they end up making it 17-13. Um, but you see why Desmond Ritter is a first-round draft pick. He was so cool. He was so calm under such intense circumstances. Um, he ends up driving down the field. He gets a touchdown, takes an 11-point lead, and puts the thing away, really. Desmond Ritter last week went 19 to 32, threw for 297 yards, two touchdowns to zero interceptions. Jerome Ford running the ball had 17 carries for 71 yards. Again, Jerome Ford is not Jarek Dokes. Um, I feel like Cincinnati fans are going to take a lot long, but like Jarek Dokes was one of the best running backs in the league last year. Honestly, they were it, he was so good at running the football. Uh, Jerome Ford's obviously downgrade from that, but he's still very solid. 71 yards on 17 carries is pretty solid. Alec Pierce ended up having seven receptions for 144 yards. <coughs> so how has this series gone in the past it's obviously been skewed more toward, toward temple because temple's been a better team for longer now temple's obviously not a phenomenal football team now um but they do leave the series 13 to 8 um the last game went to cincinnati in 2019 uh but before that temple had won the previous four so this is a very very interesting matchup between temple and cincy uh, Temple had dominate, dominated them for a long time, but uh, since he's kind of getting back in this series, they win this game, so they're gonna they make it thirteen 
nine, so it'd be much, much better and a lot closer to tying that football, tying that series if you're Cincy. Um, Temple's dominated them for a while. They've been the better team. Like the last, again, four of the last five matchups have gone Temple's way. Uh, but this is a different Cincinnati team. This isn't a Cincinnati team from 2018. This is a Cincinnati team from 2021 where they are really great. Ouch. Um, I think I'm going to go with Cincinnati to win and cover here. I always was going to pick Cincy to win, but I was thinking maybe Temple brings back some of their old, old, old tricks. And it's kind of like the Stanford-Oregon thing. Cincy normally has trouble with Temple. Um, but I'm going to go with Cincy to win and cover here. I'm, I'm going to record this game because I do have my uh, high school football game tomorrow. Wish us luck. We're going we're gonna to win. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to go with Cincy. And I'm looking forward to watching Desmond Ritter this week. Thank <laughs> you.